In this video, I'm going to share with you tips and techniques on how to import a pattern photo into Close 3D. Then, trace that pattern and export it as a PNG file so you can turn that pattern into a PDF sewing pattern. Hi, I'm Rose Willie from Encoder Fashion. Option 1. How to import a pattern photo into Close 3D. To import a photo into Close 3D. So we are here in Close Workspace. I'm going to Object Browser and below that is the fabric. See this fabric one? I'm going to change that name to Texture. Then press Enter to confirm. After that, come down here, you see under the property editor, I'm going to texture and click on this texture icon. Then this window pop up, I'm going to navigate to my photo that I saved earlier. So desktop and under jacket pattern. I'm going to click on that pattern photo, then come over here under open and click open. Now, as you can see, this is the photo that I imported earlier, as well as down here in texture. Okay, option two, how to trace the pattern from a photo. To trace the pattern, First, I'm going to create a square box and it depends on the size of your pattern. My pattern is a jacket, so I'm going to create a box that is as big as my jacket. And to create a square box, I'm going to go to this, you see right here, if you hover your mouse over this tool, you will see polygon tool, rectangle tool, and I'm going to select a rectangle tool, okay? After that, I'm going to click one on the workspace, and then this will bring the create rectangle window pop up, and I'm gonna change the width to 300 centimeter, then the height, 300 centimeter, okay? And if you guys don't have the centimeter, I have a video that how to change the unit. So go to my uh, channel in Code of Fashion and then you can watch the video how to change the unit, okay? After I change the size of the rectangle to 300 by 300 centimeter, I'm going to click OK. So by default, the square box is filled with the texture that we imported the photo earlier. And next, I'm going to create a reference box. The reference box is referred to the actual side of the pattern. Let me zoom in. You just scroll your mouse wheel forward to zoom in and let me show you what is the reference to. You see this number right here, 27 centimeter. Before I took this photo, I measured this pattern and equal to 27 centimeter, okay? To get an actual size, I'm going to create a reference box. To do so, I'm going to the rectangle tool, click on it to select, then click one on the page to bring this create rectangle window. After that, I'm going to change the width to 27 centimeter, then the height to 5 centimeter. The height doesn't really matter that much, but the width, you have to create exactly the number that you label on your pattern to get an accurate size, okay? After that, I'm going to click OK. Next, I want to apply a new fabric onto the square box. To do so, I'm going to 
add, you see under object browser, click on this add button to add a fabric. And I'm going to change that name to a reference. Okay, then press enter to confirm. After that, I'm going to transform pattern tool, click on it to select, come back down here and click on that reference box. And go to the reference fabric right here. And you see this arrow, just click on it to apply the fabric. Next, I'm going to turn this box into a transparent surface. To do so, I'm going to this menu right here and then go to transparent surface, click on it and click on it again to get the effect that we want. Now, as you can see, I can see through this pattern and just zoom in as close as possible. You can see, see right here. We want it as accurate as possible to the pattern itself, okay? Next, I'm going to scale this pattern to fit with the reference box, okay? To do so, I'm going to this Edit Texture tool, click on it, and after that, you come to this page area, just click one on the page. And while this grain line is active, we can come over here, you see the gizmo, hover your mouse over and then slide it to the right to make the pattern bigger, and slide it to the left to make the pattern smaller. And if you want to move this pattern around, you can just click on the page and then drag. As you can see, I'm moving the pattern around this box. In the square box, the pattern move around, but the square box doesn't move, okay? It's only affect the texture. So I'm going to zoom in a little more by scrolling the mouse wheel forward because I want to get this accurate side to the pattern itself, okay? And if somehow the, this grain line is not active, you just go back to the Edit Texture tool, click on it, and then come back, click on the page again, and then the gizmo symbol will come back, and then it's active again, all right? So I'm going to continue to scale it to fit the pattern with the reference box. Okay, and right now, as you can see, the reference box is still a little bit too big compared to the pattern. So I'm going to scale the pattern a little bit bigger. And to do so, hover your mouse over these, you see the yellow diagonal line when you hover your mouse over, and scale it to the right. Just click it and then slide it to the right, okay? And now, it's almost there. Let me zoom in. We want it as accurate as possible, guys, because we want the to have exact size. We don't want it too big nor too small, okay? Now, as you can see, we have it. I'm going to click on the pattern itself. I'm going to adjust the, the texture so I can have the whole thing, then I can trace, okay? I'm going to pan the pattern up a little bit, press down all, and then click on the page to pan the pattern. And you can also adjust this window bigger and smaller. You just hover your mouse over this and then drag to the left to expand the 2D window. And now I'm gonna zoom in a little more. Just scroll the mouse wheel forward. And you see right here, I only need to do one scale to this pattern. Then next I'm going to trace that pattern. I have back jacket, front jacket, and a sleeve. I'm going to begin tracing the back pattern, 
the sleeve and the front pattern. To do so, I'm going to internal, see right here, internal polygon slash line tool, click on it. Then I'm going to zoom in a little more and begin by click one, then click it again. This is important, guys. You see this curve right here, this armhole? I'm going to click and drag to create that curve. Okay, do it again. And then next, I'm going to repeat this step on the waist of the jacket as well as on the hip. And come down here, clicking, click it again. This tool is amazing, guys. Then on the neck, I'm going to click and drag. Next, I'm going to zoom in closer to adjust if anything that I can fix. For example, right here in the next, look, I kind of make a mess here, okay? Instead of create a curve, I created a two point. So to fix that, I'm going to, you see this edit pattern tool, click on it, and then you come back and click on here. Just click on one. Then I'm going to press a delete key on your keyboard to delete that point. Next, I'm going to delete both of the points. Next, I'm going to select this edit curvature tool, click on it. And then you come over here, click on one, and then just drag it to create the curve, okay? After that, as you can see closely, you see, I did not do a good job on placing all these lines on top of the pattern, but that's okay. What we can do, go to this edit pattern tool, click on it to select, and come back here, click on the point. You see right here? Be sure only the point is selected. Right now, I can tell only the point is selected because only the point is highlighted, okay? After that, I'm gonna click on it and then just drag it to fit the pattern, okay? And I'm gonna do the same with right here. Click on just a point and then get it to fit the pattern and press down all and click on the page to pan your pattern around. Next, do the same thing. Click on just a point and then adjust the pattern to fit. Excuse me, adjust the internal line to fit the pattern. And we're gonna do the same right here. And at this curve, just need a little help here. After that, press down all, click on the pay to drag, and don't be shy to zoom in close because we want it as accurate as possible, okay? It's, you know, designing, making code is a lot all about detail. Let me see. So I'm going to go back to the edit pattern tool, click on it, and then come back here. And to adjust the point, just click on each point and adjust it. Again, zoom in again and come back here and just adjust a little bit to get it all fit. After that, just zoom in in this area. And then look right here. We don't want to adjust this line. We want to adjust just the point right here. As soon as it's highlight yellow, we're not gonna adjust that. We're gonna just click over here on the point and then adjust just the point, okay? Looks like we're doing a good job with adjusting and creating the pattern. So next, this is the fun part, okay? We're going to clone this internal line to a pattern. To do that, now I'm going to go to this Pattern tool, transform pattern tool, click on it. After that, you come back over here, click on the internal pattern that we traced earlier, and then click on it and right click, and we're gonna clone as pattern. Okay, now you can just, you know, click on the, on any place in the page, 
just click one now we place this pattern okay next we're gonna repeat the step with the sleeve and the front jacket so go to internal slash polygon line and then click it to select come back to the sleeve pattern click one to place a point continue clicking and it doesn't have to be perfect we will go in and then readjust to get it right so press down all and then drag and this one we're going to create this curve right here the same right here and then click to finish where we started after we finish tracing the sleeve we're gonna go in and adjust to make it a perfect fit again by going to this edit pattern tool click on it to select and zoom in closely see right here click on it to adjust After that, I'm going to the transform pattern tool, click on it and come back to the pattern, click on the, the sleeve pattern, then right click and clone as pattern. Just zoom in and then you can click one any place in the page to place that pattern. Okay, now we just finished the back pattern and the sleeve pattern. Next. We're gonna go to this front jacket pattern and we'll repeat the step. Go to this internal polygon and slash line, click on it and come back to the pattern and click on one to place the point, then continue clicking. And this is again, very important. You click and drag to create the armhole curve. I usually do it twice to create a perfect curve for it and I'm going to repeat with the waist and with the hip then press down all and click to pan your pattern continue clicking and it doesn't have to be perfect at the first time you do it because again we're gonna go back in and adjust a pattern okay okay so I'm going to Go to this edit pattern tool, click on it, and then I'm going to zoom in. You see this all the yellow highlighted? We want to click on the page one to deselect the whole internal line, okay? Then come back and zoom in to see how much we need to adjust. Just like right here, just click on the point one and then adjust it to fit the next and here to fit the pattern right here let's just click on the point and then make it fit to the pattern the same right here oop look what i just did i instead of move the point i move the whole pattern if that happened just press ctrl z then it just move it back one step Whatever step that you messed up, just click on it and then Control Z and then move back one step. Next, again, click one on the page to deselect the whole internal line and then come back again, click on just a point and then drag forward a little bit to give it a curve. Then we're gonna zoom in again and pan to see what it fit right here. Just click on the point, move it up just a little bit and pan it in now it's look pretty good i'm ready to clone it as pattern now i'm going to the transform pattern tool click on it to select come back to the pattern you just hover your mouse over the pattern you see this highlight right click on it and then go to clone as pattern now we're gonna place it anywhere just click one to place that pattern okay so we just finished tracing the pattern. Now, if you look at closely, you see this uh, jacket. 
came with dots. So we're going to create the dot for the front and back. To do that, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. Then, again, while this transform pattern tool is active, you click on the pattern, then drag it back on top that jacket that we, you see right here, that we traced over earlier. Then I'm going to internal polygon line, click on it. I'm going to come back here and click on this dot. See right here? We're going to draw a dot on it. Click on one to place and click and drag to create a curve. We do the same to the other side and click another one to finish. After that, you see this dot just created. I'm going to convert that to a hole, okay? To do that, you just go to Transform Pattern Tool. While this tool is selected, I'm going to right click and convert to a hole. So now we just create a perfect dot for a back jacket. I'm going to click it back and then move it over here. Just get it out of this area. Next, I'm going to do the same with the front jacket. Click on it and then drag and place on top the front jacket and go to internal polygon line, click on it. You can zoom in as close as possible so you can see the dot. And then just click to place. Now drag to create a curve and then click it again. Next, go to transform pattern tool, click on it, and then right click on that dot, convert to hole. Okay, that's easy guys. After that, come over here, click on that pattern, then move it over here. Okay, so next step, I'm going to apply a new fabric onto this pattern, okay? This is very important guys. If you guys have the same fabric on everything, when you come to the print layout, it's not gonna work. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. This is the back and the front and the sleeve. To create a new fabric, I'm going to object browser and right below that is the add button. Click on it. Then you see this fabric one name. I'm going to click on that text and type in jacket. Then press enter to confirm name. After that, I'm going to the transform pattern tool. This is like the important tool that you use it over and over again. Click on that tool and then my key select all the pattern and come back to the object browser and you see right there next to that fabric. You just click this down arrow to apply the fabric. Next, I'm going to export this pattern as a PNG file so I can turn that pattern into a PDF sewing pattern. Option three, how to save this pattern as a PNG file. So to export this pattern to a PNG file, I'm going to the simulation menu. And you see this down arrow, just click on it and come to this print layout, click on it. Then bring, this will bring this 2D pattern window up. And again, as you can see above here, we have texture, we have reference box, and we have jacket. And every fabric, if we click on it, we see as a result, this texture, and the reference box and we want the jacket fabric. Click on the jacket and here we are. This is the jacket pattern that we created earlier. Now I'm going to save it as a PNG file so I can export it or turn it into a, you know, PDF sewing pattern, etc. Before I can export it to a PNG file and Later on, I will turn that into a PDF file with my next video. To do that, I'm going to right click. Then, see right here, if you right click on the pattern, it's totally different menu pop up. 
we don't want that. We want to right click on the background, not on the pattern. So right click on the background and here, this is what we want. Show texture grid. Okay. And next, I also want to see right here. As soon as you click show texture grid, this snap to texture grid is automatically appear. Okay. We want it to snap to texture grid as well as show texture grid repeat. Okay, so this is important. We want to see this texture grid when after we export it to a PNG file, we can place this into an illustrator and turn it to a PDF sewing pattern. So to do that, I'm going to the save image, click on it. And here are a couple of things we need to change. So on this side, we want preset to A4, portrait, the width, leave it as default. That's good. But under option, we want to check grain line, internal line, baseline, notches, pattern, outline, etc. And down here, show image, we want to click this arrow right here. And we want graphic texture checks as well as graphic then down below here show information we're going to check line lengths grain lines then click save then the window pop up i'm going to navigate to the folder that i want to save so desktop and in my jacket folder click on it and then name it jacket Okay, then click save. Next, be sure to save your clove file as well so you can work with it later. You can save control S, press control S to save your file and then name it jacket and navigate to your folder. In this case, I'm going to save it in the jacket pattern and save. Then you can leave it as it is if you want or go to that print layout and then click on that arrow, go back to simulation. Then it will bring you back this default window. Again, just press save one more time. Better save. Okay, so I'm going to click X to get our clove. So next, after I close clove, I'm gonna go to that folder that I saved the pattern earlier. And here, this is the pattern that we create. I'm going to click on it to open. So see right here, this is the grid that we want. Next, I'm going to make a tutorial on how to turn this pattern into a PDF sewing pattern. There is more information under this video. Bye!